Hello and welcome to this video explaining recreation tasks. Recreation involves converting the input to editable PowerPoint text and shapes. As you can see in this table, recreation contains picture recreation itself and then all the other characteristics that BrushUp involves. If you need to refresh your mind on BrushUp, please watch our BrushUp tutorial video. So as a standard, recreation contains BrushUp, but sometimes clients ask for recreation and visual enhancement. Therefore, always confirm with your admin if recreation should be only brushed up or also visually enhanced. Now we will take a look at examples of the most common inputs for recreation tasks. It could be handwritten notes, pictures, screenshots, post-it notes, photos of whiteboard notes, or PDFs from which we cannot copy the text. It is always important to check your PDF because from some PDFs you are able to copy the text, but in other cases when PDF contains pictures, then you have to recreate the text manually. In case you would be unsure, please always check with your admin. And here we can see example of input and output for recreation task. In this case, we just regularly recreated the text and applied brush up. We have also added icons as a placeholders since that was client's instruction. Now let's take a look on how to correctly recreate text and use placeholders. On the left side, you can see our input. If you are able to fully read the text, then use case number one. Then you just retype the text and your job is done. Just make sure that it's 100% correct. In case you are not able to read some letters, use case number two. In this case, you have to mark the text you are uncertain about by red color and put it into brackets. If you cannot read some letters at all, then use underscore or dash instead. Case number three is for occasions when you cannot read the text at all. Please be aware that this case is only acceptable when you can't read any letter. This would not be acceptable for this example input since it is partially legible. We also highly encourage our designers to try and assume or guess letters that are unclear. It helps both admins and clients to check and correct the text more efficiently. Just make sure that all the assumed text is marked by the red color and brackets. In here you can again see input and here is example of not good enough recreation. Now on this side we see good example where recreation contains assumed letters. This text is much easier to fix for admin or client than the recreated text in the red left box. It is also really important to consider the size of a placeholder. It needs to be as long as the word or sentence is. In our input, we have two lines of the text, but the second line is barely readable. Especially in heavy recreation slides, sometimes designers use two small placeholders for long words or even whole sentences. If admin or client then correct the text, it goes outside the box and whole structure has to be edited. You can see example of this in the green box. It is important that designer does not try to make placeholders smaller or avoid typing the letters they can read because this can impact the whole slide structure in a negative way. You always have to count with whole length of the text you are recreating. Also example in the red color is incorrect due to low effort in assuming letters and typing them down. This would be simply not good enough. Another good tip is to leave a yellow note for the client such as this one. It says, please note the left words we could not read or were unsure of inside red placeholders. This is really nice way how you can inform your admin about these uncertain words and as well our client. Now we will discuss how to set up the correct language and check the spelling mistakes. As a general rule, slides should be set in the language they are written in. So this slide is written in English, therefore that should be language set in the PowerPoint setting. But when I click into this box, I can see that the language is set to German. I can easily correct this just by clicking to this area and choosing the correct language. In this case, English, United States. Now I have few options. If I click only on OK, language will be set only to the selected box. If I click on text on slide, the language will be set to currently selected slide. If I click on all text, the language will be set for the whole presentation. In this case, I will only choose text on the slide and press OK. So as you can see now, the box is set correctly to English. And we can as well see all the grammar and spelling mistakes underlined by the red color. This way you can simply correct these mistakes just by right clicking 
on the word and then choosing the correct word. You also have to make sure that you double check these words with the input because they might not be really correct word for you, but this can help you to identify possibly correct words without any mistakes. Now let's talk about how to use Google Translate to check recreation from foreign language. Again, you can see the input we are working with. As a first step, you simply need to recreate the text the best to your understanding. Then open Google Translator and either choose the language of the text if you recognized it or select the text language button. You can also ask your admin what is the language they usually know. Now you have to copy your recreated text and paste it into the Google Translator. Then you can see the automatically suggested correction as you can see in the highlighted field. You can click on this corrected text. That will allow you to check the English translation of these automatically corrected words and sentences and you can check if they make sense all together. Before you use the text from the Google Translate, compare the input and the automatic correction from the Google Translate. Compare words one by one to really find out if they match the input. Then correct your recreation in places where it makes sense. Make sure to mark all the words that you have corrected this way by red and insert brackets around. You do not have to mark text by red and brackets only if you are 100% sure that it is correct. As you can see in our corrected recreation, we ended up only with one word marked by red and the brackets because all the other words were 100% correct after we compared it to the input. So as you can see, this technique might be really helpful when you are working with the foreign languages. Now let's talk about recreating graphs with the Webplot Digitizer tool. This is an online tool that helps to extract data from chart images. You can find direct links to the web page under the video in the description. When you want to use this tool, you just simply need to select the language and then press launch now. Before starting to work with the tool, we highly recommend watching the tutorial video you can find in the web page directly. See the highlighted area. This video will guide you through all the important information you need to know to use this tool. In this slide, we can see two examples of two charts. In the first chart on the left side, we do not need to use Web Plot Digitizer tool because this chart contains data labels. We can simply use these data labels to create the chart from the scratch. On the right side, we have graph that does not contain data labels. Therefore, we need to use Web Plot Digitizer tool that will help us to identify these data points and we will be able to create the graph afterwards. Once you get familiar with this tool, working with it is really easy and you will have no issues with working on chart recreation tasks. Another important topic is recreation in German language. Quite often we receive a German recreation tasks that have more specific set of rules to follow, especially because all the nouns in German language have to start with the first letter capital. To learn how to work with German recreations, check the article linked under the video in the description. This article contains full video guide for German recreations tasks. Now we will discuss the usage of optical character recognition tools or shortly OCRs. This is an online tool that can help you to recreate the text. It basically converts the picture input with the text to editable text, so you don't have to recreate the text fully. For clear pictures with text, we allow our designers to use the OCR systems that do not store any data. For handwritten notes, there is high chance that the OCR will not work for you. Here you can see allowed OCR online tools that comply with our data security policy and you can use them. You can find links to these again under the video in the description. There is one important thing that you need to know about OCR. And that is that the text is converted from left to right, no matter what is the structure of the input. So as you can see in this example, the text that the OCR recreated is not ordered in the correct logical order. You will have to really take this text and make sure that you place recreated parts of the text correctly to your slide. So generally, when using OCR, all text must be double checked with input manually, word by word, letter by letter, and corrected by you. Designers can't really rely on correctness of OCR tool. So in conclusion, this tool can save you a ton of time and you are allowed to use mentioned OCR tools that do not store client's data, but you have to make sure that you really check the text and you guarantee the quality of the recreation. 
We came to the last topic where we will just sum up common mistakes that you should try to avoid. Generally, try to not rely that recreation is correct after just retyping it. You always have to double check your recreation for any typos and mistakes. Another mistake is providing something we call lazy recreation. Marking words just by empty placeholders, even though some letters are really legible. You need to write all the letters you can read in case you can't read the whole word. Not following the correct format for placeholders is another common mistake. The text has to be read and contain brackets. You can see the example in the slide. Some of our clients suffer from being colorblind, therefore they cannot see the red color, so it's really important to insert also the brackets into the text. Another no-go is forgetting to set up the right language check in the settings. The language always depends on what language is used in the recreation itself. Setting can be found in the left bottom corner of the PowerPoint window. And lastly, do not avoid usage of special characters such as the ones you can see on the screen. Your admin might not notice this during the task duration, but they will when they finalize the task. If these characters are missing or just regular A is used instead of the special A character, your rating will be lowered as this is a content mistake. This is all for this video. It included all important information you need to know about recreation. We really hope this will help you to deliver great recreation slides. Thank you for watching and see you on the platform.